Artwork, critiques, Photoshop files and reference sheets are all available on my Patreon. Hello there my delicious darlings, I hope you're all doing bloody well. My name is Mikey and welcome along to another episode of Draw With Mikey, episode 128. This is the super casual long rambling hour, it's the midweek series where I just read through the comment section to see what's going on with you guys. So if you've got anything you want to say or ask me, get yourself in the comment section below and with any luck I'll be reading it next week around. Guys, I hope you're well. It is Inktober, I did ask you last week basically about your Inktober based opinion so that'll probably be some of the answers that we're looking out and my question for you lovely people this week seeing as it's also supposed to be spooktober is um basically guys can you recommend any scary video games i do think or at least i do wonder if i've asked you this question before um but i've certainly been asking you about nice um interesting to play indie video game titles but i've got a very small window of this october when i'm still here and then i've got like some other things and a bit of traveling to do and then i'm going to be back in november but i really do want to just hit up some scary video games so Oh my god, that's just reminded me, guys. So guys, don't forget, I'm giving away an Artist 12 XP Pen Graphics Drawing Tablet for the third time. At this time, I'm going to be giving it away live on Twitch on October Sunday the 20th. Um, and on Twitch is where I'm going to be playing these scary video games. So yeah, if you guys have got any suggestions, let me know. At the moment, I'm playing Dead Space 2. It's terrifying. But also shorter indie scary things like... There's Little Miss Fortune, that's kind of more creepy psychological, but all of it still counts. So if you guys know some good stuff, get in the comments, help out poor old Uncle Mikey, please. Anyway, the whole point of this series is me reading through the comments. Let's see what's going on. Uh, Depressed and Dank, a lovely name, says, I completely forgot about Inktober. I was drawing of pencils all day. Oh my God, Depressed, how dare you, good sir. Oh, oh, by the way, did I say? Get yourself a lovely cup of tea, guys. Hmm. I strongly recommend it. You might be getting your own artwork and homework and stuff and drawing done in the background, but get yourself a lovely cup of tea. Uh, Hassan Wilson says, Teach me, senpai. I'm having trouble with consistency. Every time I draw the same original character, he comes out differently. Hassan Wilson, you need to understand how to map the face and place for features from different angles. I happen to have a tutorial about that, although it is for female characters. But yeah consistency in your character design right because loads of different expressions and emotions that you can put onto a face change the shape of the face itself so you need other signifiers to help you kind of recognize exactly who's going on uh, hairstyle the outline accoutrements clothing all that sort of thing uh, there is actually a whole world to dive into um, if you look at the uh, semiotics of character design it, it's incredible and it's super fascinating. So yeah, if you're heading down that road, have a look into it. Have a look at the main key shapes that build up the character and what you're trying to describe with your character's design. Um, do you know what? In fact, a great int introduction, dude, will be uh, watch a super eye patch wolf video, which is probably something like what makes a good character um, or what makes a good character design, um, and then start reading some books. Pro Highlights, number one CSGO, Dota and more, nice name, says, I subbed just because of the intro, everything else is a bonus. Oh, well, thank you very much, dude. Welcome along. Oh, yeah, and uh, in the background of today's episode, because obviously, guys, I'm just drawing whatever I'm drawing over the week, and you guys are doing whatever you're doing. Um, Kimetsu no Yaiba time, Demon Slayer time. We're having a look at Nezuko. So I'm thinking, guys, that maybe we're going to be doing some Nezuko fan art. If not for this weekend, maybe next weekend. And obviously I make things pretty salubrious. But the problem is, is like, I quite like watching Kimetsu no Yaiba. So my attitude towards Nezuko is simply like, we must protect her. So I don't know if I can really get my head around making like a sexy Nezuko character. I just want to like, you know, she's fictional, obviously. But I just want to pat her on the head. I don't want to give her like extra large boobs. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do about that. Maybe we'll just do a non-sexy fan art piece. Oh my god, I don't, don't think that's what people are here for. But we'll see how we feel about things. Yes, guys, I'm still talking about Demon Slayer. But, oh, oh my god. Okay, guys, finally. I have finally started re-watching uh, JoJo's Part 2. Uh, the Battle Tendency series, which is very close to my heart. I really fucking enjoyed it last time around. I watched all of Stardust Crusaders right up to the end, which is mental obviously but i always knew i was gonna have to rewatch season two because there's some bits in that that really fucking got to me and jesus i fucking when the fucking pillar men come out and it's just like the music and it's all like the sound effects are just like really visceral and doo, boo, 
And their poses are obviously fantastic. Guys, if you have not watched JoJo's Part 2 Battle Tendency, do make sure that you see that. I know later JoJo's, everybody tells me it's fantastic. But, oh man, the Pillar Men. There's some incredibly crazy stuff going on there. Anyway, so yeah, basically I'm saying that I'm finally getting my life in order to the point that I'm starting to have almost routine and i'm starting to actually be able to catch up on stuff like uh, opening all of the notepad files that i have full of your suggestions for many many things that being said though guys do tell me about some scary video games let's get the spooks going uh, griffith grim says you are the greatest artist in the whole time humans exist holy shit dude <laughs> That's very kind. It's completely untrue, uh, but very, very kind. I will I will take, you can draw and you've motivated me to draw boobs and something like that. Greatest artist. No, sir. But thank you. Thank you even for saying such jokey things. Uh, Darko Strauss says that uh, the issues with most movies nowadays is a lack of script revision. People who are not real writers and artists making top level decisions. Oh, dude, is this in relation to what we were talking about? People still being interested in Star Wars the other week? Because... To be fair, The Last Jedi was a singular vision. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, that was written and directed by... Oh, fuck. Do I know who did that? I want to say Paul Feig. Is that his name? Um, So that was actually, weirdly enough, uh, one of the rare examples of a non-studio executive interfered kind of situation. Um, Although he had no direction from the first film. There was no overarching game plan or script. And he obviously kind of threw a lot of stuff to the wind. He killed off Snoke, because fuck it. Uh, raised parents for nobodies, because fuck it. Um, burning the old text, burn it all down, start over, because fuck it. Uh, what was that weird moment on the uh, ice planet where a guy looks directly into camera and just goes, hmm, it's salt. But other than that, yeah, no, absolute mess of a film. Fallen Reaper says, I'm doing Inktober a little bit differently. Um, and that's how I see a lot of artists doing it. I'm training, I'm aiming to do ink drawings rather than tracing already made pieces, mostly to work on getting more comfortable with my lines and thinking about them, etc. I've done way too much digital art. Ooh, I've ruined that word there. I've done way too much digital art. Did I say this is a rough around the edges series? When I try to zoom in on any traditional paper with my fingers. Oh God, that's never a good sign if you're trying to use touch gestures, IRL. Holy shit. Dude, yeah, do you know what? I don't actually see, in a very similar vein of what you're saying, I do not see many artists, um, like, with pencil art or line art or previously done art, but they're trying to trace to ink. Every time I see people do Inktober, I usually see them just diving straight into the ink attitude, so to speak. So good on them. But again, I did Inktober in 2017, uh, and my focus for that, or my prompts, so to speak, was essentially just drawing all of the monsters from uh, One Punch Man. And I think out of 30 days... Wait, 30 days have September, April, June, and November. I think out of the 31 days of October, um, I managed maybe 27, and it just absolutely burnt me out. It's I was just like, oh, wow, forcing myself to do this stops making it fun, even though I really enjoyed all the pieces that I actually drew. Um, although, to be fair, I, had to, I was doing it all at work, and I was absolutely not doing my office job at the time, but it wasn't important to me, so and it still isn't, so screw them. Um, yeah, so I definitely, as you can see right now, I'm playing around in the sketchbook. Towards the end of this footage, there's a little bit from my last live stream where I'm just uh, kind of just doing a really rough sketch of her in digital as well, but mostly just chatting to the chat. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to make sure I'm definitely getting that sketchbook out and definitely getting the pencil case out again as well, just to try to keep it on theme. But I'm absolutely not holding myself to any set regulation of having to do much vain tobering. Like, it's just a stress, and then it's just like, well, what's the point of me doing this? Uh, Deserted Nebula says, This man makes sketches that look a hundred or a thousand times better than anything I could make in a day. Deserted Nebula, just keep up the practice, dude. You'll find it. We're all on a journey of just trying to get our head around what is art and what do we like to draw and design and stuff. Joshua and Gang or A Jang says consistency is my largest issue. Some characters would be looking too similar if I draw more than one. Oh, dude, same f- dude. You've just covered two different topics there. One of them is same face syndrome. Have a look at that, dude, because there are some people who get a bit locked into that. Uh, worse is same expression syndrome, which is I see a lot of incredible artists still just do that. Um, but you've actually just mentioned a similar issue than what uh, that previous person was mentioning as well, whose name I've already forgotten. Um, in terms of trying to make your character look consistent consistent for a range of emotions, angles, and redraws and redesigns. Maybe we need to look at that. You need to kind of pick out some key points of your characters. But yeah, we'll come back round to that idea, actually. It's probably something to talk about in a tutorial one day down the line. 
Diku0922 says, Jesus Christ! I would have had so much struggles drawing even one of those faces, but he's just drawing away almost effortlessly. Oh, Diku, you're far too kind. I mean, a lot of those faces are actually, if you look too hard, are really derpy and really uh, terrible. I was just filling up the sketchbook page, trying to get back into the swing of working uh, with the pad. And I bloody love that IRL texture. I'm always talking about this. Um, obviously, for work and what I do as a living, absolutely, I have to use digital. Um, but in terms of like what I physically enjoy, I mean, they're both fantastic. They both have pluses and minuses. But I think if it came to the flip of a coin, I'd possibly stick with the pen and the sketchbook if I had no other choice for the rest of my life. Yeah. Um, a random, even though I never use it. Random Avocado says, Mikey, can you make a series for us beginners called uh, The Road to Average Drawing or something like that? Random Avocado, you mustn't be afraid to dream a little bigger, darling. We'll do a tutorial series called The Road to Greatness, The Golden Path, The Diamond Roots. I'm thinking of JoJo's again. Uh, Steel Mikey Run, it'll be called. Golden Cannonball Clackers. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be fantastic. And it's going to make you the best kind of artist you can be. Uh, Gravity Dust says, Is it strange how most of my characters or ideas or backgrounds come to me in the shower? No, dude. I've had a fair few thoughts. So my main two uh, zones for great thinking. About one or two in the morning when I should be trying to get to sleep. And stuff in the shower. Absolutely great times to have like an alert mind. I think Gravity Dust... I think there's been a study. Now, I don't know if I've, this is like a dream I had, but I think there's been a study about why you have moments in the shower and when you fall asleep. And both of them are to do with like the change in environment or your brain falling asleep, one or the other, um, stimulating like different parts, like from some ancient days. I don't know. It's an evolutionary thing. But yeah, no, it's, it's like a real life thing that happens. Uh, Such a dreamer, 100, says, anime recommendation. How heavy are the dumbbells you lift? Nothing crazy. Just a nice, chill anime. Oh, yeah, guys, if you've got any anime, I mean, tell me about the scary video games but that you might know of. But if you've got any good anime recommendations, I'm all about it. Scary games, psychological games as well. What's one that, um, that I've seen recently? I don't know what it's called, but I would describe it as being Dark Souls, but a 2D 8-bit scrolling version of Dark Souls, but it still looks really adult. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Anyway, uh, such a dreamer, thank you. I'm not going to add that to the list, only because... I've already added that one to the list. Um, I was asking you guys, like, about three or four weeks ago, what is the name of this very anime? Um, because I was... What was I researching or looking into? Basically, I was looking at pictures of gym fit girls. Maybe it was just, like, in my own spare time. No, I'm kidding, it's art. Um, but then I was just like, wow, these gym hotties, like, are really hot. And now I'm just like, wow, if a girl's got, like, a good pair of shoulders on her and, like, you know, some ripped tabs... I think I'm down. Like, I think I'm all into it, which is now just changing all of my Pinterest folders that I'm putting together and collecting. But yeah, I was like, uh, I'm really down for checking out this anime. Uh, nice and chill, you say? Yeah, I actually have no idea what it might be about, other than the overt theme. As long as it's not something that's stupidly etchy, harem stupid. Guys, what was this anime? And I know for a fact somebody out there will know what I'm talking about. What, and Because I've not watched it, and that's not like, oh, I'm too good for it. But just genuinely, the moment I heard about what it was, I realised it was probably absolute trash. It's an anime, and the anime surrounds a sport that all these girls play. And the sport is that they have to knock each other off of podiums only using their bums or something like that. They just have to do bum attacks. And it's that's it. Apparently that is literally it. Does anybody know? I'm sure, God, I, this is going to be embarrassing if that was a dream. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it's a real thing. But anyway, what I'm getting at is um, I hope uh, how heavy of a dumbbells you lift isn't exactly down that alley. I hope there's actually something going on that's going to make it worth watching because I'm certainly going to give it a little go. Uh, Rock Wilder says a lot of people actually like the Asian character Rose oh, from Star Wars, but somehow she started to disappear from the merchandise. Not a joke, there are comparisons, where the character has gone from the same artwork, even though a lot of young female viewers like her. Oh shit, they've done a Stalin on her. They've actually removed her from existing like promotional materials and artworks based on how badly received she was. I heard the poor actress had to leave Twitter um, after that film came out. Oh man, I hope she's okay. Like, I just, when people, ah, we talked about this last episode. Screw everybody who thought Rose and her actions was a good idea, except for the actress. It's not her fault. Uh, Ramita says, Mikey Senpai. Hello, Ramita. Do you have some tips for a new artist who wants to be known? PD Fanks. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> the ooh, ooh. Um, who wants to be known? Who wants to be known and made famous online? Mm. Mm. Tips to get famous. Well, hmm. 
you could what gets you famous really quickly you could start slagging off other artists people are going to hate you but they will retreat you um you could get embroiled in a sex scandal that helps um you can try just increasing your artwork slowly day by day and just really working into it and doing loads of fan arts that might bring in a new audience that will already like the existing characters and like your variations and then slowly wean them onto your own original artwork and original characters and build up a fan base that way but that's just not quick do you know what i mean that's that takes like a, a while to do um you could commit a horrific crime that'll get you in the newspapers mm, it's tough it's tough but um maybe just try the second one Joshua Harris says, hey Mikey, hello there Joshua, what do you think of Christopher Hart's manga for the beginner? Joshua, I've not read this book. In a previous video, you mentioned that you hadn't found a western book on drawing manga that was in the style that you're looking for. I couldn't find one that I liked either, but this was the best one that I saw. I'm new to drawing and I wanted to learn how to draw manga and anime characters. I picked this book up a while back and after watching your video, I wondered what you thought of it. Dude, I see I've heard of this. I think somebody else... See, Christopher Hart is a known artist and a good one. Uh, but let me just Google Christopher Hart's How to Draw Manga. I'm just having a little googaloo. Bear with. Hmm. Images. Kids Draw Manga Shoujo. Extreme Art Manga. Ah, oh, Christopher Hart's Draw Manga Now. Got it. Best Friends Forever and Magical Characters. Oh, he's done quite a few. Hmm. So this is, I, I'm just Googling it, so I can't open or look inside any of these books. Uh, the guy probably knows what he's doing, and he's probably put it together, but I'll tell you what um, my main complaint was. And this is me not complaining about Christopher Hart, and this is me, to put it in context, if you're making a book that encourages people to get into drawing, that's fantastic. I already just assumed that's my base level of thinking, good on you for producing a book because you want to encourage others to draw. That's really important to me. But the reason why I just personally, like my gut reaction, tend not to get into stuff like this, i.e. when there's a Western made how to draw anime or manga book, is because I'll, I'll take one look at the girls on this front cover and they are not up to the standard of like interestingly designed anime girls that I want to achieve. So I just, I don't want to learn from somebody, and maybe this is hubris, but I don't want to learn from somebody whose artwork standard is not the type of artwork that I want to actually make. Um, even though, and I know that's a, by the way, that's not good advice, that's a very stupid way of thinking, because even though the person doing that artwork, sure, the way that he designs um, anime girls might not be particularly interesting to my eye but the actual knowledge in how you design them and the techniques you use to build up characters might be absolutely fantastic there might be gold there um but that's definitely the gut reaction i have like in the back of my head um so yeah dude not really kind of gotten into that one joshua however i will certainly take a look in good time because when i did my um kind of books recommendation of the ones that i've got experience with at least one of the main things I was asking about was, guys, tell me all about your recommendations, because I do want to see what's out there. So I will certainly, at the very least, look it up on Amazon after this um, episode and try to like click on the look inside button to see if I can see a few pages. Cheers, dude. Uh, Hides in the Basement says, I'm going to follow the official prompts for the first time since my October in 2016. Guys, what are the official prompts, by the way? I've been seeing a couple of people online doing some interesting looking stuff, but I have no idea, because obviously everybody's interpretation is wild. So I have no idea what the actual words are. Um, I've been doing better than expected. Oh, good on you, dude. Also, the first time that I do 30 thumbnails, I'm going to leave the last one as a freebie for whatever I want to draw. <laughs> dude, good on you. You've got yourself at least one thumbnail breathing room. Nice. I'm glad you're actually smashing it, by the way. Uh, Kid with a Squid says, Anybody else has got that moment in Inktober where the brain makes things look cool and then it just banished when you put on the ink on paper? Dude, I think your sentence was perfect, and I think my reading of that was just incredibly awful. Yeah, so basically, in your mind's eye, you've got a great idea of exactly what you want to put to the page, right? And any act of doing it isn't there. Dude, I do not know if this is the right term. I'm, I don't know if this is what people talk about when they say drawing with the right-hand side of your brain, but I'm basically just going to call it like, you know, the Kim Jong-ji kind of method, where basically... Uh, in your head, you imagine the picture, and in your mind's eye, you try to imagine that the picture's already on the page. And if you can do that so hard that you believe it, then all you have to do is trace over the image that you're thinking of on the page to actually make the artwork. 
Um, the problem is, is that when you do have a fantastic image, it looks fantastic in your head to put on a page, 95% of the time that image is not as fully realized as you think. It's mostly composed of feelings and like key zones which have a certain energy and weight to them but you haven't actually line by line imagined the cool image after all you've imagined the feeling of the cool image and what some of like the elements might be which is why if you ended up trying to draw it you realize that the drawing is guiding the image more than the image you want is guiding your hand and then you just end up with something that's a bit disappointing or just lacks conviction of a certain right kind of weight but it depends on how you build things up right i'm talking about oh jesus i'm talking about i've got an alert turned on in the background i'm talking about kim jong ji's um particular method for doing stuff not personally mine because i do not have that level of skill or ability to project uh, so i just go for the building block method and kind of try to have a feeling and a weight and a flow to stuff and then try to fill in the gaps from there. But I know what you're talking about, but that is because you've not, if I had to guess, obviously, I don't know what's inside your mind, but if I had to guess, it's because you've not fully coalesced an actual image. Guys, try doing this and start small. Just think of like an egg and uh, the egg has got like a single crack in it. And now just imagine a 2D drawing of that egg with a crack in it and look at a piece of paper and solidly imagine don't keep playing with the image in your head solidly imagine one egg shape and there's a bit of a crack in it and just understand there's maybe one or two zigzags in that crack project it onto the page see it there stop it from moving around see it exactly as you have it in your mind's eye and then very simply draw it as you see it in your head Build up from there, slowly build up. Because if you can get that projection method going and you already understand like concepts of like a uh, vanishing points perspective and so on, you can end up like just being a fucking wizard, which is the dream. In fact, actually, I want to try this method. Okay, I'm going to be right back. Uh, Dino Godley says, Greetings, Mikey. Hello there, Dino. How you doing, man? I saw Joker the other day and it was goddamn phenomenal. I loved every minute of it. As for the controversy, I was like, really? Are we having this conversation again for the 50th time? Oh, God, yeah, of course, because people were just like, now, I'd certainly think there's nothing wrong with the conversation existing, right? Because it's very interesting to kind of poke at these ideas and ask ourselves, well, what are we assuming and why do we like worry about these things and why don't we worry about these things but it definitely in my head kind of fell into the whole zone of jesus can't we just enjoy films anymore plus um you know is it a filmmaker's responsibility to make morally correct stuff all the time or can it be arts and entertainment my outlook is very black and white on this whole kind of topic i basically it stems from are there jokes that you should or shouldn't make in comedy or that you shouldn't or shouldn't allow, be allowed to make. And in my head, no, nothing should be off the table. You should be able to make a joke about anything. Now, does that mean even I would like the joke? No, I might be disgusted by some of the jokes, find them cross, find them inappropriate, um, and just think that they're not funny. And some jokes probably can't even be funny. Maybe there's some topics that can't. But I don't think anybody should not be allowed to try to do it. And equally, if we start saying, well, it's okay to make some kind of films about some kind of characters, but we don't think it's okay to make films about other kind of characters, then where do you draw that line, right? You're just stemming things and stemming things. And the whole point about these types of expression is to explore stuff. And some of the stuff you're going to explore is going to be difficult or um, challenging. And if you don't do that and you just have like a huge hyper-censored like media zone now, then, you know, you're no different from China, basically. You're just making, like, middle-of-the-road stuff that, you know, conforms to the states and all that sort of thing. Anyway, I'm not going to go down a whole rabbit hole. But, uh, yeah, I know what you mean. I just... I don't mind the conversation being there, but I don't think it's a particularly valid one. Also, I do hear that it's quite an interesting film. Uh, so I've still not had any spoils for that. I will eventually try to have a look. Maybe I should have tried to watch it in the cinema after all. I'm going to have to wait ages till it comes out now. Hmm, we'll see how we feel. Um, but, yeah, excellent. I'm glad you bloody loved it. Uh... And wait, I think there's something else in the back of my head I wanted to talk about in relation to that. Oh, no, no, no. I was just, when you just said controversy, that just reminded me of, um, guys, so right now you've probably seen on the internet is all that Blizzard stuff. Oh my God. So this is why I was talking about China, 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 China. So, <laughs> so obviously, um, as you may or may not be aware, Hong Kong, the Chinese island, was owned by Great Britain. That's my country. We owned we owned Hong Kong. Uh, Britain did right up until 1997, uh, and then we had a handover where we gave it back to China because we had like a hundred year lease on the country. It was so fucked up. <laughs> There's actual people living there, but we're like, hmm, you're under my lease now. Anyway, the people of Hong Kong enjoyed like you know 
uh, I think some form of democracy and a lot of human rights under British rule. And now under the Chinese rule, there's a lot of concerns that they have a few less rights and are a lot more censored than they used to be. And there was a law um, that they tried to pass where basically if you were a dissenting voice in Hong Kong, if you're a critical of the Chinese government, they could suddenly um, expatriate you over to mainland China uh, and interrogate you under less than admirable human rights situations and all that sort of stuff. So there's not much going along in a way of free speech all of a sudden for people over in Hong Kong. And as you probably heard, they're doing these mass demonstrations. They've been doing it for a very long time now. Uh, they're pretty upset. Um, so... Uh, unfortunately, you, you don't go against the Chinese government. You know what I'm saying? Like they come down hard. So according to the like, if, the way it's reported in the Chinese government, it's it's all like you know an American CIA led operation where it's just a load of terrorists on the streets, and you know all the good people of Hong Kong are glad to be under Chinese rule. Where you know that may not actually be the situation. Anyway, let's not go down this big rabbit hole of thing. It's just um I'm regurgitating a lot of what I've been seeing on the media recently. But basically, what I'm getting at is that a Blizzard player um, basically said free Hong Kong at the end of one of his things. I'm not sure if he was a Thai. Chinese uh, Blizzard player, which is all apparently China, and uh, he, uh, yeah, he Blizzard kicked him off the tournament, took away his prize money, and banned him from playing. And the reason Blizzard did that is because Blizzard has a lot of investment from Hong Kong, uh, and Blizzard do not want to lose all of that money, even though you know it's for regimes that some people find less than salubrious. And I think the kind of indicator Blizzard got was that um, some guy high up in the NBA spoke out in praise of the Hong Kong protesters. And so, like, China basically turned around and stopped playing NBA basketball and started withdrawing a lot of money from the NBA leagues because of Chinese pride. Uh, so it is a pretty fucked up situation. It's basically um, a slightly more public version of stuff that happens every single day. A company has to f- think about the money in their bottom line and the minimum um, probably amount of profit they need to make for their investments, investors and shareholders every year. And uh, sometimes that means taking not to the moral high ground from a business point of view. The difference is that this is super public, so everybody's just like, hey, Blizzard, what are you up to? Which is also interesting, because they, they only have, like, BlizzCon happening at the end of the month. Last time, obviously, there was a Diablo Immortals thing, where everybody was just like, fuck you, Blizzard, for playing for making mobile games that none of your core audience wanted just for Chinese market. So I'm really curious to see how this particular year's BlizzCon goes. Hmm. But, you know, it's a fucking funny old world and a funny time to be alive. I personally don't have an opinion simply because I'd like to visit China one day without getting suddenly arrested on the street. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Kun Osama says the intro makes me laugh every time. Oh, thank you, dude. It was always a pleasure to make the uh, JoJo's intro. And Shido Tagashi says, oh, no worries. He's only been drawing for what? 20 plus years? <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> dude. Hey, dude, you not worry. At any point, you can reach a point where you want to just fill a Facebook full of uh, a page, wait, a sketchbook full of uh, faces, dude. Do not worry. Do it now. Do it later. Do it in 10 years time. You'll find it. And yeah, um, I've been playing around with pen and ink for a while on and off. And again, let me just remind you guys, some of those faces were terrible that I sketched in the sketchbook. Don't you worry yourselves. Uh, Ragepuff says, I'm going to be reviewing their smaller tablets. Maybe a cheeky Canvas Pro 13. Looks down at my own Canvas Pro 13. Small. Oh, dude, Ragepuff. So yeah, I've still not opened. I I got it, by the way. I've got a Canvas Pro 13 turned up in the post saying you will receive. Um, but I've not even taken it out of the box to start my unboxing review. What are your thoughts on it, dude? Anything that I need to keep an eye out for? Um, JK, make sure to talk about how the... Oh, you've actually got some info for me. Make sure to talk about how the tablet slides off of the stand. I had to put tape at the bottom to keep mine from sliding. Oh, oh my God. Okay, guys, nice. Thank you very much for the insider info. Uh, Tay TZH says, Mikey, I'll talk about my misfortunes at another date. Me, give it a minute. Five minutes later, Mikey. So, I don't know if I've mentioned, but I've been struggling with. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake, man. You know me too well. Uh, JK, love you, mate. I'm doing day two of Inktober. I've got 35 minutes left on the clock, but I'm almost done. Anyway, cheers, bud, and have a good day. Tay, you have a bloody good day. Obviously, <laughs> you've got an eye on my habits. Have I... I made sure to keep today's intro as quick as possible, just because I do want to obviously talk to you guys as much as possible, which means maximum time on a comment, less time on a Mikey catch-up time. Um, Because, yeah, I haven't got anything to moan about this time around. We're just all cracking on. (laughs) Thank you very much for the comment, though, dude. Uh, Salt Bunny says, I'm doing my character from a story of mine in a different costume stroke outfit for Inktober. Oh, Salt Bunny, are you doing a different costume and outfit every single day? Very, very nice. Um... Uh, making OCs for pre-existing work, not of your own. Oh, yeah. So, um, something that came up last week uh, was basically somebody was talking about how they make original characters, but 
they're their own original characters to go into the worlds of pre-existing manga. Like, you have to make up your own Super Saiyan character to go in a Dragon Ball universe, or my own Nen, U- Nen user, based around drinking tea, obviously, who might exist in the Hunter Hunter universe. Oh my god, I came up with that on the top of my head, but I'm actually super into that idea already. Okay, that's going to be um, the next DWM. Uh, Anyway, you've said self-inserting or inserting original characters into pre-existing works. I found it to be very useful if you want to come up with a story of your own. Oh yeah, because I guess... So this is a thing, right? I think Salt Bunny, you've probably hit on something really interesting. Because if you want to build up your entire own original story or manga, that is a very daunting task. It can be super intimidating and probably not something you can do in like a 20 minute sit down. But if you take a pre-existing world where all of that legwork's done for you and then just build up your own character into that world like another existing manga, I'm sure everybody and their dad has envisioned their own version of a ninja that could exist in Naruto at some point, then you just get to focus on the character, the character story, their own back arc. And yeah, you could eventually take that and turn that into your own realized universe and your own original work later on down the line. Yeah, no, I like it actually. That's a really good baby step into full-on realized character universe creation. Nice. Never really occurred to me. Uh, Nima says, I can't believe I've managed to draw anime tits and everything by watching your hands tutorial years, two years ago. Thanks, Mikey. You're welcome, Nima. So, was it the how to draw hands tutorial that introduced you to the channel? And since then, all the salubrious extras have made their way up to busty ladies. Fantastic. My job is done. Uh, Dr. Max says, I highly recommend Trinity 7. And I know that you'll love it too. Oh, let me put this tea down. Trinity 7. Oh, I wonder what this is. Control C. I'm assuming it's an anime and or manga. Let's Google it. Oh, Trinity 7 is a fantasy romantic comedy manga series. Oh, okay, dude. I'm going to leave this tab open. Thank you very much for the suggestion. Uh, Ivan Talev says, I've been watching your videos for a while and I thought I was subbed. <clears throat> Anyhow, I love your content and I'm blissfully optimistic about Star Wars. Ivan, I like your optimism. Okay, I'll tell you what, guys. I'll tell you what Star Wars has definitely done right recently. Uh, the last two films and especially Rogue One. The cinema fucking photography. Those fucking shots, those fucking vistas and those moments and scenes look absolutely fantastic. And looking at the trailer of the upcoming Star Wars film... It looks like it's going to look amazing. Do you know what I mean? This is why I want to see it in a cinema. I have, I've genuinely got no idea what they're going to do. There wasn't really much to wrap up following the middle film. Um, but I know it's going to look absolutely amazing on the big screen. So there's always going to be that at the very least. Obviously, you know, God knows what's actually going to be happening during the story. But dude, I'm glad you are feeling optimistic about it. We don't have enough of that in the world. Anyway, uh, you thought you were subbed. Well, how dare you? I'm glad you've now solved it. Uh, Kaiju Killer says, hey Mikey, hello there Kaiju, I would like to suggest Jojo's Bizarre Adventure because it's honestly a good show. Cool art by the way, your art style is very distinct. Kaiju Killer, I'm already converted good sir, that's an excellent suggestion, I'm already 100% down. Just like I was saying, I'm currently re-watching Battle Tendency. Do you know what, like, there is a Nazi, and I won't give you any spoilers, but there is a Nazi who is a horrifically awful human being, and he massacres people in this, like it sets you know, pre-Second World War, I think. Um, and <laughs> and obviously he's a fictional character. You learn to fucking love that guy <laughs> like in JoJo's Battle Tendency. <laughs> Strawheim! <laughs> he's so good! Anyway, uh, Lizard, Lizard Aloaf of Vid says, Hey Mikey, hello there, Lizard. I'm too busy with school to draw every day, but I had an idea. Oh, go on. Uh, because I can't do one every day, I'm going to do 10 prompts with 10 minutes for each. So if I don't have time to redraw it over and over again, just trying to get it perfect. Ah, that's an excellent thing. So when you're warming up and trying to get into figure studies and stuff, you have to do a load of, well, you don't have to, but it's very strongly suggested you begin a load of very short poses. 30 second pose, 30 second pose, one minute pose, one minute pose. And you're just trying to work quick and loosen up as quickly and fast as possible and then do longer and longer uh, studies. So mixing that with Inktober sounds like an excellent idea if you're a bit short of time. I'm still trying to get my art half as good as yours. You are too kind. And thanks for the inspiration to get back into art and the hours of commentary to listen to whilst drawing. Oh, Lizard, you are welcome. I mean, I say this a lot, but this is the whole point, right? Obviously, I've got drawing tutorials on the channel. I try to share what little I know when I've learned it myself. Um, And sometimes there's product reviews because maybe you want to get into digital art and these tablets are expensive. So I want you guys to basically 
not get conned or screwed over. I want to tell you what's good and when I want to tell you what's bad. Ideally, just tell you what's good. But every now and then we get a really bad tablet and I can't keep quiet about it, um, which is great. And then the draw of Mikey series is a twofer, really. It's kind of a backbone of the uh, channel now. Um, it makes me make sure that I've done some drawing every week outside of me just getting like fan art videos done. So it's very useful for me. And obviously the whole point is we get to touch bases, me and you guys are viewers. Thank you so much. I'm You guys are the reason I'm doing this. Um, but also it's like a nice hour, right? I'm doing whatever I'm up to and maybe you guys are trying to get some artwork done in the background. So you can get a little bit of rambling Mikey on top of it. Thank you so much, guys. But yeah, no worries. I'm really pleased if it just helps you get into art or anything like that. That's kind of like, I don't know, that's kind of why I'm here. That's my job in this planet, to try to get some of you guys drawing boobs or get you into art in a very general sense. I don't care if you're young. I don't care if you're old. I don't actually mind if you don't like art either. You're still more than welcome to hang out and talk to me about films or any other nonsense or video games. The only thing I care about is that you've at least tried to give art a go. If you don't like it, that's fine. I'm not a, like a Stasi or Fort Police. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. Um, but I do definitely want you to try it because it's super good. And uh, we talk about this all the time. Let me sip this tea. It's super good. It's got therapeutic properties. If you're having a hard time in life, sitting down and drawing can help take your mind off it. Uh, and I think it's excellent. Uh, Souls Fanatic says Code Vein, aka Anime Souls, came out, and that's been fun if you like Souls games or super edgy anime. Wait. Uh, oh. Oh, so wait, Code Vein, Code Vein's a video game, right? So, wait. Let me just, oh, shut No, I've nearly lost for Trinity 7. I'm just going to open a new tab on Google. So I think I was asking you guys last week, Code Vein is a video game that's come out and everybody's playing it and in my head I was like I've heard of Code Vein before this cannot be a new video game was that because it was an anime beforehand so I've just typed in Code Vein and it's gone to video games Code Vein anime it was an anime it was an anime yeah do you know what every Google result is for the video game now you have to be really specific to see the anime come up Code Vein is an action role-playing game set in an open world. Oh no. Oh no, that's the game as well. Wait, what is it? Wait, was it an anime? Oh, maybe... It, I, guys, I swear I've heard of Code Vein like 10 years ago. Am I going crazy? Anyway, uh, it looks super edgy. Yeah, dude, I've seen a couple people play it. I haven't actually like sat down and got a feel for it or anything. But I've definitely seen it in passing. It looks visually stunning and awesome. So I do quite want to get my teeth into that, actually. Uh, virus says, roses are red, violets are blue. If you like this drawing, make this blue. You've rhymed blue with blue. Virus, that's terrible. Get life. And Trador Angelov says, my take is that I should give up on trying to make a living out of this. I can't even draw yet. Teodor, never give up. Even if you have to put it on a back burner and do a day job and all that sort of stuff like I did. Never give up. Always hold on to the flame. And Tyrannus says, Jojo characters are very popular in the YouTube animation community right now. Oh, are they popular again? I mean, they're always out there at some point. You know what I mean? They're super memeable. They're lots of fun and Jojo's is great. God, I'm so glad so many, so many of you guys are talking about Jojo. Um, Ariel Dude says, I'm working on Inktober and some prints. This year, I'm focusing all of my pieces around Fate Grand Order. Because one, I love the designs. And two, it's the only way I'll ever get to the characters. Dude, fantastic. Um, I've said, I think we talked about this before, but my fate knowledge goes as far as, um, I think it's Unlimited Blade, Blade Works, and I need to watch Stay Night, the original, and then I need to watch the one that's a prequel or something, because you guys were telling me about Attila the Hun is like a really hot anime character in that. We need to do some fate characters, there's plenty to get done. And Johnny Black says, behind on Inktober, you're behind already, bruv, but I am doing character designs of black people for a project, so this is a way for me to work on character creation. Excellent, going to be using up that ink. And Chris Venter says, this one comment about when you do something that someone else likes, it becomes another job. I need to be reminded of that. It's gold. Oh, yeah. This is me probably on my own. By the way, what I think is the way I want to live my life, I appreciate it's not right for everybody. So don't worry. I'm not trying to like, you know, shit on anything. Um, but yeah, one of the reasons why I very rarely do commissions and also one of the reasons I've angled my whole life to do only what I want to do and like leave the day job behind is because, yeah, if you work on somebody else's project or do what else somebody else wants to do, it's... It's, it's work. It's a job. It's not exactly your thing or your passion, even if it's very close. Um, Wayne Draws says that I'm doing Inktober and I'm going to be drawing like crazy to help improve the ways 
Uh, like the feeling when I see, oh, I like the feeling when I see my improvement uh, in my art and your channel is a favourite. Thanks for the videos. You're welcome, Wayne Draws. That's very kind of you to say. Yeah, no worries, dude. Uh, Michelle the Artiste says, you said that you're looking for more anime. I really suggest Castlevania. Castlevania the anime, as opposed to Castlevania the game. Okay, let me just grab my uh, notepad file. Castlevania has a great soundtrack. Castlevania the anime. Do you know what? I've seen, not the anime, but I've seen some anime style fan arts that looked absolutely incredible of Alucard and Co. Interesting. Oh, and then Michelle Further says, I also suggest the Castlevania games. Thank you very much, Michelle the Artiste. I will bear those in mind. Uh, Annoying Dan says, I like that how when he dries eyes, we... I like how when we draw eyes, we try not to cover them with hair. Oh yeah, right, Annoying Dan, because... Eyes are like the first thing you tend to draw on a character. You start from the face for windows to the soul, and a bit that naturally draws focus because your own human brain is hardwired to recognise faces. Um, and then you kind of tend to get the shape of the hair on top, and you don't want to lose all of that eye stuff. But also, there's a whole kind of psycholo psychology or visual language about how you frame the face with the right kind of sweeps and motions of hair, which is why you get so many anime character designs of this kind of center parting bit that sweeps out round the side and then comes back in or the right kind of like semi brush to the side fringe or like you know bangs that are getting slightly grown out but still create all these kind of pointing triangular shapes it's all about how they frame the eyes and balance out the face which is why so many anime haircuts just you do not get in real life because it just does not work like that um when you're not just doing design language uh, jad dawkins says do a book now with your current skills and when you get better put out a new volume of a book for updates upon your improvements in your knowledge and know-how oh jad wow ballsy just stop thinking start doing Wow, I like your outlook. But I've not got the legs for it right now, dude. I'm so busy. Um, yeah, no. Oh, I do need to think about it. Guys, so it's not next year anyway, but I need to worry about it. It's for year after next. It's 2021. Um, I need to worry about that. Uh, next year's Mikey on tour. Wait. Oh, shit. This year's Mega Mega Merch. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I've not done anything towards my merchandising. Guys. We're going to be doing merchandise. I hope you're excited. I completely forgot. So for this Christmas, there's going to be t-shirts, prints... All that sort of stuff. I'm going to do all the things. Damn it, I completely that just fell by the wayside. Yeah, so this year's Mega Mega Merch, Out by Christmas. Um, and then next year is Mikey on tour, and then the year after, book, question mark. Thank you, Jad, for the encouragement though, dude. Um, Archimede. So, Jad, there's a, an ancient Chinese philosopher, and it sounds like I'm making this up, but his name is Wang Yang Ming. I'm pretty sure he's like 13th century Confucian. And he says something along the lines of... To know and not to act is not to know. Where basically the proof is in the pudding. You can theoretically understand something, but until you experience it and do it, you haven't really understood it at all. So, Jad, you're absolutely right. Do the book. But still, not for a couple of years, mate. Uh, Kusanagi Flame says, hopefully you'll see this in the next recording and it gets decent upvotes. Mate, are you on Reddit? Uh, this character already has a fairly thick and definitely busty, but I want to see her Mikey Mega Mega levels of thick and curvy. Maya Natsume from Tenjio Tenge. Tenjio Tenge! Oh man, is that like an old fighting manga? That rings some bells. Maya Natsume from Tenjio. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, holy shit. Dude, I'm going to leave that tab open. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. God. Bloody hell. Do you know what I think I... Do you know what I... I think I tried watching Tenjio Tenge, and I think I stopped watching it because it fell into, like, the oldest thing that slightly bothers me back in the day. And it's got, like... Basically, there's a black character in it. And so, obviously, he's, like, a break-dancing, bebop, DJ, rappy-type guy. And I remember just thinking, oh, God, not again. <laughs> like, I get it. Japanese is an island. Japan's an island nation. They've still got some pretty dated opinions about people from other cultures. But I was just like, dude, come on. <laughs> We're better than this. Not that there's anything wrong with breakdancing or bebopping, but like that is not the entirety of black culture. Um, Jessica Tran says, it turns out that I made some tea with a guinea pig in my bra. Also, I started Inktober today because of you. Jessica Tan, that is fantastic. Um, back in like uh, an old house I used to live in when I was much younger, um, we had like all sorts of rabbits and guinea pigs and chickens all just roaming around the place. And the guinea pigs, because they are a little bit incestuous, like they bred like hell. So we had like quite a lot of guinea pigs at one point. 
And they're super sweet because, like, when they go somewhere, they go in single file. So, like, we had this little out room as an extension to the house. And the guinea pigs used to come in and they'd come round through the kitchen. They'd all, like, go whoop, 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 as they're going along. But there's, like, you know, tw- not 20 of them. There's, like, 10 of them in a row doing all this. Whoop, 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 whoop. And they'd go through there and they'd go through the dining room and they'd go past the hall and they'd go all the way into the lounge because, like, that's where all the soft furnishings are. And then they'd all be in a lounge. And then if you, like, because they got really good, they they learnt the noise of somebody ripping cellophane off of an iceberg lettuce. So when you started unpacking the iceberg lettuce back in the kitchen, they'd hear it and they'd start squeaking really loudly and they'd all run single file all the way back to their hutches because they knew they were going to get fed. Uh, and that was really sweet until you realised that it meant that there was guinea pig poo everywhere in your house. And then one day the TV doesn't work and you realise that they've eaten through all the fucking wires at the back. And you know that, like... Some of them must have got electric shocks or something, but they just chewed for everything. So they are kind of awesome, but you do have to pay the long price. Anyway, the idea of a guinea pig in a bra, fantastic. I'm very much down for it. Uh, Plazean says, whilst I'm not doing the Inktober challenge, I figured it would be a good time for my first ever ink drawing, since I'm already drawing for around a year. Hey, dude, good on you. Um, it, you do have to take the plunge a bit with ink, especially if you're like me. And um, When I was younger... I used to spend a lot of time just working in pencils very, very lightly. Some of my earlier sketchbooks, and I, if I open the pages and I'm not looking in the, the right kind of light, I'm just like, is this a blank sketchbook? And then I look really, really hard and I'm just like, oh no, this was from back when I was just somehow super hesitant from making dark permanent marks on the page. That's why I switched over to just using an ink pen directly in the sketchbooks, even if I'm making just sketchy rough stuff that pencil would suit just so that it forced me to actually make permanent marks and just get used to it and move on in my life so dude i actually appreciate that's quite a big step for some people so good on you good sir good on you um burrowing fox 22 says uh, my hero academia and undertale i've got no idea if you've watched or played them but you should also british bros hey saluting for the queen good sir um yeah dude undertale when i was actually so back um a few weeks back as well i asked you guys for just um, good indie game recommendations because I've got a brand new computer um, it's called the God Engine that's my name for it at the moment it's fantastic it's the best thing in the world and it also means that I can stream video games for the computer video games um, so people live on stream just the other day I explained about the PC Master Race so I now get to enter into that and I will be playing a lot of indie games on Steam and other things so Undertale was strongly recommended to me but guys tell me about the horror games Gruesome horror, psychological horror, um, any of that just like, you know, effed up stuff for October, let's get involved. Um, although what people also recommended was I play Subnautica. Apparently that's a little bit creepy scary as well. And personally I'm somebody who, uh, I'm not a big fan of the sea. I don't really like the ocean. I despise the idea of going on boats. I don't mind being by the sea on land. I don't even mind when there's a storm and the sea looks really angry. As long as I'm not on or in the sea because... Man, the whole idea of swimming out there and then you're like on the water, but between you and the ground is like an incredible drop of like ocean and you can't see the bottom. There could be anything down there. And then like every time you're on a boat, all you want to do is throw up and you just feel really awful. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the sea. I don't trust it and I don't trust you. Uh, Black Carrot 32 says, I'm going to do Inktober and my prompt is Dragon Ball. Oh, dude, how are you getting on so far? We are like... Yes, yeah, so the tenth, right? So we are one third of the way through the month. How are you guys faring? Um, and if I had to guess, I'm sure by now most of you have all been behind a little bit, and you've had at least one day where you've had to do two ink drawings in one day to catch up, because that's the Inktober way. Um, Annoying Dan says, "What's going on at home, eh? Well, I'm drawing stuff for somebody of the other gender. She's eyeballing my artwork. Ooh, Annoying Dan, do you impressing the ladies? Good luck, sir. Good luck." And Rashone says, Inktober seems to have narrowed down to a very restrictive type of art. Highly stylized manga or fantasy art characters. Some of the art is beautifully done, no question about it, but surely there are other styles that are also interesting. Hey Rashone, I would recommend a, a streamer artist called Maddie, or Madeline Ink um, would be like another search term for her. She does a lot of Inktober, but um, the last year that she did it, she was very expressive and it was all about blends and finding shapes and stuff as opposed to, you know, super high stylized final finish artwork. I do know what you mean. I mean, I'm going to be honest, that's the kind of shit that I like. But um, I do know what you mean as that being like a bit of a direction. And this is a thing. Some people 
And this is where <laughs> this is where I think like it's not worth it. Some people take Inktober um, very much as being a, an opportunity to grow on social media and try to reach a wider audience as an artist. Uh, and they don't really take it as an opportunity to experiment or just do what they want to do um, with the ink. And that is exactly the best method to just stress out about something that's not designed to stress you out. Um, so people have some very interesting attitudes towards it, especially artists or semi-professional artists who are trying to like get that uh, media sway. Because like, you know, Instagram is flooded with the Inktober hashtag during this month. So people aren't getting like the same reach that they might expect to and they're just trying to force it. I don't know. I'm not judging. It's just a very interesting time, depending on what your outlook about it is. But yeah, you do actually raise an interesting point there. Ooh, got a lovely group of people who hang out here and listen to these rambles. You're all quite intelligent. Um, Helgisa says, it's October already. Okay, I take that back. I thought it was still August. Where did September go? <laughs> yeah, I take that back 100%. Um, Rule Rosta says, for anime to watch, I would say Dr. Stone. Oh, dude, yeah. Um, do you know what? I think that's the one where I want to read the manga a little bit first because the illustrations were excellent, uh, really good contrasting. Um, but yeah, um, I will dive into that anime after Kimetsu no Yaiba. Is Kimetsu no Yaiba finished for a season or what? I've just gotten to the bit where no spoils, where they're just boarding the train. Is that like kind of a jump off point for a different part of the season? Anyway, you guys tell me. And uh, Zentron says, I found The Force Awakens to be just all right. Although Faye just being able to... Although Faye being just able... Uh, Faye, oh, Ray. Okay. Although Ray being just able to use the Force relatively easy, only having just learned of its existence and with zero training to be on the... Uh, bullshit side. Okay, that's the Mary Sue sort of thing, yeah. And um, the fact that she could get into somebody's mind and give them, like, commands in the uh, first one, The Force Awakens, was definitely a bit too bullshitty. That was too much. Um, but then with the direction of Luke in The Last Jedi to also be on the bullshit side, in The Return of the Jedi, no matter how far it seemed his father had gone to the dark side, he never gave up on him, never stopped trying to bring him back to the light side of the Schwarz! <laughs> Spaceballs 2, the search for more money. <laughs> um, I mean the Force. Yet, in The Last Jedi, uh, he felt the teensy-weensy, itty-bitty, littlest, teeniest bit of the dark side in Kylo, then immediately tried to off him. Seriously, what the fuck? Everybody else was just too much bullshit as well. They thought we weren't paying attention and could get away with giving us... Nonsense, but here we are. We really don't um, like their viewers to fight. No, they really don't like their own viewers. Suffice to say, I will not be going to watch The Rise of Skywalker. I don't care anymore. Oh my god. Okay, dude, you've actually written a fucking essay. <laughs> um, you got, and I'm going to just skim through. Basically, you've got an awesome desk that's auto 80 centimeters deep from eBay for just £13.50. Okay, I'm actually very impressed because a good desk is a great life. Well done, good sir. Um, also, you're suggesting Diana from the 80s Dungeons & Dragons animated series. Dungeons & Dragons had an animated series? I remember there was a film, uh, Dungeons & Dragons, and it had the guy from Lolita in it. Uh, you know, the guy from Die Hard 3. Diana the Acrobat, Dungeons & Dragons, the animated series. Huh. This has just reminded me to do some uh, Thundercats characters as well. Sexy Chitara. Ooh. Okay, dude, thank you very much for the suggestions. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm still skimming for your fucking essay, by the way, dude. This is de dude, this is definitely too much text. Uh, da -da -da -da, ba -ba -da -ba. Oh, drawing from the mind with your eyes closed. Okay, definitely some interesting stuff to do. And you took a GMVQ Intermediate Art and Design course back in 1996. Dude, good on you, good sir. So I recommend the shutting your eyes method. Okay, I do actually understand what you're going on about, and we'll give it a, um, a cheeky little go in the future. Maybe. We'll see what we're up to. Uh, but dude, yeah, no. Maximum respect. Thank you very much for sharing so much information. Um, but yeah, you're completely done with Star Wars. I know many, many people are. But I still know it's going to be a visual feast. But yeah, the whole idea of people... Um, do you know what, guys? I think Red Letter Media covers it the best. The fact that like they almost became like political rallies, these Star Wars teaser events... Grown men are weeping about Star Wars, and it, the thing is that they're no longer, they're no, so back in the day, Star Wars was excellent, Star Wars, the original trilogy, were excellent films that people then loved because of that, whereas now, 
people are loving Star Wars without it being because of their films, but just because it is Star Wars. And that's like blind, fucked up cult leader religious love. Do you know what I mean? It's not love based on the fact that the actual things they're into are good. Again, like I say, if you enjoy stuff, don't let me actually stop you from enjoying it. That's not a nice way to live. Um, but it also creeps me out a little bit when they like political rallies and it's just it's just like, dude, we need to cut this off and we all need to kind of move on a little bit. Not necessarily grow up because I'm certainly not growing up, but like just kind of open your eyes a little bit and smell the coffee. <laughs> Again, I, I, this is it. Like I'm caught between that and realizing, look, if somebody's enjoying something, why should I be the one to stop them? But equally, I'm just like, oh, dudes, come on. We need to come away from this. Um, Hachiko says, hey, I found you recently and I already know I'll be sticking around. I love it. Thank you very much. I love your videos. Easy learning. And it's good to see how you do stuff and figure why some of my drawings aren't, aren't working. Hachiko, thank you very much for saying. And yeah, me trying to figure out why most, most of my drawings aren't working is a very large part of my life. Uh, Lude Race says, I've been watching you for only today and now I'm in love with your art. Oh, thank you. I'm a rising artist and just watching you really inspires me so much. For Inktober, oh, that's really kind of you to say. Uh, for Inktober, I've been doing it for two years, but this year I'm going to be doing something called Gortober to change it up a bit. Oh, I can already take a guess. Um, I also make original characters for fandoms and universes. My favourite would be my boy Teo I made for MHA. MHA. Dude, you've got to help me out. What's MHA? As he can freeze his whole body into an unbreakable ice body, but he has to be, as I call it, reheated to turn back to normal. Oh, brilliant. There's a price to pay for the power. This is another of the reasons I love Nen in Hunter Hunter. If you put more conditions to make a, a power or a technique more difficult with more repercussions, then that power and technique becomes stronger because of it. it it's so interesting. So yeah, the idea of consequence to a power... Very, very interesting stuff to me. Um, hey, Mikey, I'm just doing a fan art of Harley Quinn whilst watching this, says Daisuke Uchiha. Awesome. Yeah, guys, if you've been up to anything, if you're looking down at your pad now because you've got some artwork done or maybe you're just working on homework, any kind of creative project or just anything you're up to, get yourself in the comment section and let me know. Remember, obviously because of the nature of the channel, we do talk about a lot of art and anime and manga, but you can just ask me anything in general. Like, you know, I'm a relatively open book. I tried being like really, you know, subtle and mysterious, but it turns out I can't do that. It's not in my uh, strong suit. So yeah, if you guys have got anything on, let me know all about it in the comment section. If any luck, we'll be catching it next time around. Um, again, as ever, my lament, I've not managed to catch as many of your comments as I bloody well would like to. So if you've got something important to tell me, which I've missed, copy and paste it into this episode of any luck i'll be catching it next time around um and i'm probably going to fit in a couple more comments but just so that we don't run over let me just say right now a shout out to my delicious patrons on patreon we're only um a few bits now to fill in until my catch-up is complete well then i need to do all of the hardcore doujins but that's super adult stuff we'll get there so quick shout out to repair 1997 breton f anthony c michael p fnm 1010 homongchi l akumu arts Jamie, Marissa, Zahaki, and Brendan J. You delicious people, amongst others, are the highest tier patrons on Patreon for last month. Uh, rewards, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, um, Demon Slayer fan up this time around, but uh, am I going to make sexualized Nizuko? I just really, I just feel like she needs to be protected. I just don't know if I have it in me. Hmm, I'll probably come up with something, don't you worry. Actually, there's loads of sexy characters now that we've gotten all of the other like high-end Demon Slayers in there. Yeah, yeah, we'll just work on one of them. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's going to be coming soon. Then there's just May and June for my uh, catch up. And then once I've got that out of the way, it is plain sailing for the rest of our sweet lives. So bloody love you guys. Thank you so much for the support. You are the reasons I'm able to do what I do because YouTube certainly loves to demonetize my content. So thank God for Patreon. But now that I've got that out of the way, we've got a tiny window for a couple of more of your comments. Um, I'm just scrolling down. Uh, Whip Lip says, I'm sort of doing Inktober. I'm not really stressing over it. I'm just drawing when I've got the time. Dude, that is the perfect way to do it. Good on you. And uh, Wicked Manish says, I hear Hunter Hunter. I subscribed. Oh yeah, Wicked Manish, you're going to be walking around here, dude. I've always got time to talk about Hunter Hunter. Uh, Assassin's Weed says, thanks for not putting us through your intro this time. I really appreciate it. <laughs> oh, did I not? Wait, last week, did I not drag you through a Mikey update? I tend to usually do that. But yeah, I'm trying to focus on you guys a little bit more. And uh, Hobbit Trash says, watch Vinland Saga, mate. It's one of the best anime I've seen so far, but that might be because I love history. Dude, 
I will tell you very quickly that whenever somebody has ever asked me for a manga recommendation which is underrated or under the radar, I've always turned around and I've said, read Vinland Saga. I've not seen the anime, man. I've heard that there was an anime, but I have read the manga to completion and you are absolutely right. It is really good stuff and there are not enough people reading it or um, by extension watching it. 100% with you. Um, guys, thank you so much for joining me this week. Do remember to get in the comment section and let me know of any spook or horror games. Um, I've played Resident Evil 7. I'm going to replay Resident Evil 2 for remake because I've only done Claire once and it was terrifying and loads of fun. I'm still playing Dead Space 2 live on Twitch from time to time. And uh, in fact, I might even be playing video games whilst you're listening to this episode. So go on to twitch.tv forward slash Mikey Mega Mega. But if you can recommend others, psychological horrors, short or long, indie or well made, get in the comment section and I'll read through them next week around. Have yourselves a bloody lovely week, guys, and take care.